We're Texas CASA, and we're working with visionary thinkers to explore issues in the foster care system that need fixing and propose solutions. This is The Fix. Today, we're going to be discussing child sex trafficking. Children are removed from their homes and placed in the child welfare system due to allegations of neglect, physical abuse, or sexual abuse. Those are the exact same vulnerabilities that trafficker use to coerce victims into human trafficking. The Department of Family and Protective Services comes out with statistics each year about the number of children who've been trafficked in the child welfare system. But there is a population that they're missing. These are the kids that just age out of foster care. Sometimes they find themselves on the street with no place to live, no place to sleep, nothing to eat. So it increases the vulnerabilities that they have for what is known as buyer control trafficking or also known as survival sex. That is where youth that are on the streets will trade sex for something to eat or a place to stay. So what are we to do? As people who work with vulnerable children, it is our job responsibility to understand what it means to be trafficked. The term trafficking is actually our language. It's not theirs. If you were to walk up to a child and ask them if they're being trafficked, they're going to say no. That's because victims do not self-identify. And that's because of the increased grooming process where children believe that it was their choice in what is happening to them. And it's only through therapy that they really begin to understand that a crime has occurred. So when you begin to work with a child that's been trafficked, you're gonna notice first anger. They may even want to return to their trafficker. You will see a mistrust for advocates and also for law enforcement. That's because these children, the systems that were supposed to protect them have failed. So that means it's our responsibility to be able to build rapport and to build trust. So how do we do that? First, we have to be consistent. If you tell a child you're gonna be somewhere, be there. You also have to be very genuine. They will be able to tell if you're fake. The other thing is, you should have a poker face. You're gonna be hearing pretty horrific stories about what happened to them. If you find yourself making a face or even gasping, that'll immediately make that victim feel like they're gonna shut down and not share stories with you. The child you see the first time will be much different when you see them again at three months and even after you see them a year later. And so you never know that the work that we're doing today affects the future because these kids are our future. They are the next teachers, social workers, lawyers, business people. The sky is the limit if we commit to serve with them on their healing. And that's the fix.